Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, I'm the master taste of whiskey.com. This is my son Ben and today we have a closer look at Fettekern. Yes, I've just been to the Fettekern distillery. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice distillery just south of the Cairngorm Mountains. So for everybody who is not uh, involved with the geography of Scotland, you have England, then you have the Lowlands, then you have Edinburgh and Glasgow, and then you have a bit of a normal area up to the Cairngorm Mountains, which are the first range of mountains that uh, divide the, uh, the lowlands kind of from the highlands and space side and just of the foot of the Cairngorm Mountains you have the Fettekern distillery with uh, a nice creek flowing next to it. Uh, it I think it was a, uh, a mill back in the days in the 1800 something. Yeah, I visited Fettekern as well uh, quite long ago, 24 years or so. <laughs> okay. And uh, what I remember is the a specialty of the stills. Oh yeah. Uh, where you have a not only a reflux equipment, you have a special reflux equipment because you're uh, having a ring uh, for water which uh, runs down the outside of the still. So you see these uh, markings uh, going down of the water and this brings an additional reflux. So it's kind of an open lumen still. Lomas yes. still has a cooler. Uh, Usually all the coolers are enclosed with, systems, mm -hmm. but and this one open. is open. <laughs> and when you come into the still house, it's just a, a steam bath and you see the steam <laughs> rising on the still. It's very just good for the cameras. very, very <laughs> beautiful. You can't see much of it on the cameras. You actually no. you can have a look I at mean, it. You get the fog on the lenses when you enter. Oh, you, oh, you, you can. <laughs> the, the, the camera heats up and then it's not a problem. But uh, it's, it's uh, very, very beautiful. They, they're just building uh, visitor centers and kind of the the tour route through the distillery so when you watch this in 2020 2021 then you might as well think about going to Fettekern I think it's like one and a half hours from Edinburgh something like that mm -hmm. so and it's uh, very in beautiful in former times Fettekern was very unpopular to single malt enthusiasts it was mostly for the well, I think White and McKay blends probably mm -hmm. And today they switched over to uh, single malt whiskies, but uh, there are not many of them out there. That's mm -hmm. the typical 12 year old. And there had been a 23 year old, which was kind of still affordable, but it was expensive. It's, it's in <laughs> short supply as well. Yeah. And then a, 30, a 40 and a 50 year old, which mm -hmm. is impossible to. Yeah. Pay. But I've talked mm -hmm. to the. Um, the distillery manager, the master distiller, I think it was the distillery manager and master distiller. And is there a video online? Yes, there is a video online where I interview him and he said there will be a 16 year old at some time there. We used to have the Fior, 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 something. Fior. Fior, mm -hmm. that was a no age statement whiskey. Mm -hmm. It was not that popular, but it was okay. It was a, a nice introduction feta can whiskey. Yeah, and today so, we have a special Feta Kern independent bottled for us, for our company. So this is a, a rarity and there are only 221 bottles of this kind. It's 30 years of age. It's vintage uh, 1988. Mm -hmm. So December just 1988 in, the, and, uh, in the end of the big recession. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's cast strength 50. 8.3 mm. and this was matured in a hog's head so you do not have this uh, very dark uh, color of a first fill cask but after 30 years you would have lots of oak in it so uh, 30 years you have to have a decent amount of refill cask otherwise it's it's a decent the amount of cask with a single cask <laughs> you have to have a refill <laughs> cask <Yeah. laughs> so it's uh, December the 7th, 1988, until June the 11th, 2019. Yeah, so this is a bottle costing just 150. So for a 30 year old, this is really cheap. Mm -hmm. For a 30 year old. Cask strength. Cask strength, mm -hmm. yeah. So 
Enough said. You might say it's a unicorn amongst the whiskies. <laughs> Talking about <laughs> unicorns, the uh, the unicorn is the um, kind of the the animal of the distillery. If you look at the the emblem of the distillery, you see the unicorn on there, and yeah, it's it's quite nice because it's the unicorn is quite a, a Scottish thing. Yeah, every little girl is playing with unicorns in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Good word for whiskey. <laughs> Fifty-eight. The alcohol is there, but not too strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is oak. This is really oak. And if you move your nose into the glass and out again, then there is a, a point where the oak is really, really strong. And then you get some lighter fruitiness. I think this is the distillery character, but those fruits are oxidized. And not, not those oxidized like sherry cask, but they are darker, riper than the normal ones. Yeah. I have to say that for me the dominant character are the ripe fruits. Mm -hmm. I do find them stronger than the oak. You do have a good amount of oak in there, definitely, but the first thing I was I was realizing is, oh, there is a good amount of, um, I would even say overripe fruit, like overripe pears, overripe apples, bit of a mushed grape note in there. But the 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 oak is a, a decent, soft American oak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So, but no. as soon as I try to to find out more about the fruit it's the alcohol in there so so i have to dilute no yeah chance. there's a bit of a the the cask strength does come through close to 60. Uh, a little bit not too a lot friendlier now i'm below 50 mid 40s upper mid 40s mm. oh. fruitiness is stronger isn't it very strong now if i would have would have had that in a blind tasting i would have had said said that is a a very round young 14 year old whiskey but extremely it does not round smell that old yeah very round but not old but very, very much on the peer sides now. Yeah. So cheers. Cheers. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's what the doctor ordered. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. No. <laughs> No argumentation mm -hmm. with health. Mm -hmm. um, Mouth-watering, uh, good big oak in the aftertaste. Still there, going over to, well, cappuccino, no, mm, espresso. Um, oakiness, spiciness, strong. So the aftertaste is very much dominated by the oak. And in the moment you have it in your mouth, it's it's mouth watering, it's rewarding, it's full, it's covering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful when you have it in your mouth. It's fruity, light, fresh. Very, very much on the pear side and on the apples. And when you swallow it, you do realize, oh, that's a thirty-year-old whiskey in there. In there, you you realize it's mature. It has a bit of an oak flavor in it. Hmm. Very, very round. I think I got down to about 48% ABV. So, mm. it's a well-rounded and complex whiskey. There is, there's a lot of more stuff in that now that the, you don't find at the first sip. Yeah, so now the the uh, smells of the, the oak, the, the pleasant smells of the, the oak, the caramel and the vanilla, 
shining through, combining with the fruits. Mm. 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 So, mm. on the second sip, you do have find that that fruitiness is just even combined with a bit of a yeah, maltiness, cereal, maybe an oak note. Do you know these these breakfasts, that healthy breakfast where you have oat in there and then you you cut in that overripe um, pear in there and a bit of a, a very red apple and yeah maybe here and there just a, a smidge of raisin in there so that's that's pretty much how it feels in in a whiskey form yeah and you definitely have that oak in it so mm -hmm. after the, the second sip it manifests in so your mouth the so cereal is is consumed out of an oak bowl with an oak spoon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> as you would get so, an on a what do you call it me these medieval markets. <laughs> <laughs> but that was softwood. No. <laughs> yeah. So this is a very special old uh, single cask, which is not too. Well, too much on the cask side, but still shows uh, the distillery character, uh, shows maturity and uh, is special. So if you're not used to, to long, dark, deep oak, be careful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I don't find it um, as a, it's not a European bitter oak, it's, no, it's more American of an yeah. uh, intense American mm -hmm. oak. Yeah. So it, I find it very pleasant. For me, the the oak oak is a pleasant flavor that just turns into unpleasant <laughs> when you have over maturation within uh, European oak, where it turns into a really bitter coffee note. This one is a a friendly oaky American oak note, mm -hmm. round and, and fresh. Okay. So unfortunately, you will not <laughs> find this on the international market. But have a look out for the Feta Can whiskies. They are, from our point of view, a bit underrated. Keep your eyes open for the 12-year-old, maybe then in the future, 16-year-old and the 23-year-old. And if you can afford it, 40 and the 50. <laughs> so yeah. thank you very much for watching. If you found this video interesting, then please feel free to share it with your friends. And see you speed next up, time. Speed up, speed <laughs> up. <laughs>